I'm Neil McElroy, Chief Executive of the Centre for Local Economic Strategies, and we're an independent organisation. Uh, we're based here in Manchester, we're across the UK and beyond. Uh, we work with policymakers at a local and national level. And what we are, we are socially and environmentally ambitious for the economy. Um, I also chair the Greater Manchester Poverty Action Group. Uh, it's a network body looking at and exploring action on poverty across the city region. And of course, we work with the university in terms of the poverty monitor that developed uh, what, six months ago or so was it, Ruth? Um, I'm also an honorary fellow at the Centre for Urban Policy Studies at the University of Manchester too, so I see Cecilia's here, so I'll also see her. Um, we are plural in our economic outlook, uh, and I think it's worth saying that we have no truck with a dominant, singular, neoclassical view of how the economy operates. Um, I've just been back, I'm just back from the South, South Korea, so I'm a bit jet-lagged, uh, and what it was was looking at the local economics of happiness and dealing with issues of poverty and inequality. And indeed, in South Korea and the world over, there's a growing sense the economy must serve the people better. Um, it seems to be missing out the people. Uh, economic growth and trickle-down is exactly that. It's trickle-down and we need a torrent. Uh, economy must, must, the economy must work better for people. We need community wealth building and a singular neoclassical view on economic growth and the social policies of a shrinking state which throw from it will not do it. Um, inequality, what should be done? I say we need action. Uh, and so let's look firstly at the action in terms of devolution as an action point. I think many of us, me, Claes, a lot of you, put great hope in the devolution. It seems an antidote to the growing inequality nationally and this in some way is a way of addressing the problems and po poverty and inequality issues we have in this city. But it's only devolution. There's no guarantee. It's what you do with devolution. Uh, and in fact, it's not really been about tackling inequality. Inequality perhaps in terms of the, the south and the north, or London and Manchester, but it's not about tackling inequality inside the city as such, or at least there's not been a focus on that at the present point. And there's certain action to try and step up the plate to make sure that poverty and inequality is part of that devolution dimension. Um, it's broadly been about economic growth and public service reform. Um, the other thing to mention about that is that clearly wealth is good and effective public services are important for addressing inequality. But there's a national question here. There's systemic social and wealth issues in the redistribution of that wealth. Now, there's a little bit we're dancing on the head of a pin here, underpinning the plight we have in this city, many people in this city, is a national context which is creating inequality. It creates poverty. And how much can we buck that in Greater Manchester and the institutions of Greater Manchester is the real point in question. Uh, I hear a lot in public policy circles about innovation and local system change as the salve to inequality and poverty. But really it is dancing on the head of pin and we need a twin track approach. We need national policy which is redistributive and a guarantees fairness. I mean Atiyah touched upon it but the ripping up of the agencies who are tasked with ensuring fairness is no way to ensure fairness in the country. The agencies have been depleted. But we also need local change which focuses on socially just outcomes to our activities. Um, devolution clearly offers hope and we need to grab it, grab, it, grab it and then grapple with it. And we must influence devolution. We all, as individuals and as institutions, grab the devolution opportunity, grapple with it and make sure that it's advancing social outcomes that we want and tackling inequality. The levers that you have in part of the devolution, at the moment, what can Manchester, Greater Manchester do in terms of levers? Some of the levers it pulls, they're connected to the Treasury. And the Treasury will say, no, you can't spend more than that, you can't redistribute wealth. The levers are, are there's, there's nothing, it's not attached to something that they can influence. So there's something about fiscal power to Greater Manchester. We need to influence that we actually get a chance in Greater Manchester 
to deal with inequality, where we can harness some of the wealth and we can do progressively th things with it. Until we get that, we're actually quite fettered on how devolution can advance uh, and address inequality. So Greater Manchester and other devolved equalities need some fiscal power is something that needs to happen. But we also need a social dimension to devolution. It needs to rapidly catch up with the economic dimensions of change and we need to link social with the economic. And we must influence devolution that we've got in Great Manchester for that. We have this publication here called uh, Claire's Does, The Local Double Dividend, Ensuring Securing Economic and Social Success. I've got some copies. Um, what it tries to do is to show us ways how we can advance a social dimension to devolution on the back of the economic. And what we argue for, in a sense, is a new local social contract, a contract between citizens, community voluntary sector, the local state, major institutions like the university, and business. All of us need to get together and decide what kind of Manchester we want to live in and devise a social contract that deals with it, that, de that, that, that achieves that. And inequality and poverty needs to be high up the agenda, and we, hopefully with some fiscal powers, can forge that new social contract. We are cursed and lucky to be living in these times. We're cursed because it's hell on earth for a lot of, a lot of people and our fellow citizens. But we're lucky because we can actually forge something new if we grab and grapple with this devolution moment. One of the things we talk about um, is important, which I mentioned is what we can do about inequality, is this creating a good local economy, the law of anchor institutions. By anchor institutions, we talk about hospitals, universities, the local state, local businesses, organisations that are in this city that's not going anywhere. The University of Manchester is not going anywhere. It's here. It's got £900 million of income, I think. It's got 11,000 staff. They're not going anywhere. They're here. So how do we extract the maximum potential of that £900 million and of those 11,000 staff to do good things for the city? In America, the anchor institution materials, I think, much, um, uh, anchors are much more um, further developed. I think the work that Make the Difference University of Manchester has started, I think it's great. I think you can do a lot more. I'd like to see the university playing a virtuous, deep, voracious role in as an exemplar of what an anchor institution could do in this city. Employment policies which support local people, including living wage. University does it for its own employees, not yet done it for its, some of its contracts. Yeah? Can we get all hospitals doing it? Can we get the local state doing it? Yeah. Procurement and supply chains, which supports local businesses, local jobs, local social enterprises. I want to know, what is the university's supply chains and who are you supporting? How much is actually local business and local social enterprises? Investment strategies, massive land and property portfolio. How is that working to be pro-social, pro-Manchester? It's also important, and it's work we've been doing with GMPAG, the Great Man's Poverty Action Group, to, to have small test beds of change, and Atiyah alluded to it. There's lots of love, lots of nice experimental stuff going on, alternative stuff going on. And I just spoke to Mark Burton from Steady State Manchester a moment ago. There's great ideas. What do they need? Acceleration and DOSH. Who pays? £900 million pound of this university. Come on. The university is a major institution. needs to support and accelerate the beautiful, organic, alternative activities that emerge in this city. And there should be many thousands bloom in terms of alternative stuff going on. And the role of major institutions are so important in that. I would also make a plea... Sorry, I'm going on. <laughs> I would also make a plea to research and policy funders. I'm, we are quasi-academic, I suppose. We're independent, no sugar daddies, no sugar mummies. Um, we need to stop funding safe work. Joseph Rowntree Foundation, are here? They were here. Great stuff, great, great stuff. Be a bit more risky. Yeah? Stop funding stuff that describes how crap it all is. And start funding stuff that does things. Action. 
That's, we're in, in the age of action, the age of doing stuff. We're not really in the age of describing how crap it all is. We've got enough of that. Let's find, or let's, let's set, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a researcher. I'm into evidence bases. I'm into a great interrogative forensic understanding of the problem. But let's direct more money to action. That's the moment we should be in here in Greater Manchester. I would also say, and I would, if I can, embarrass Ruth and as many other people, public intellectuals, in, uh, people in the academy who are prepared to say that is not right and get involved in civil society. Come out of your ivory towers, come out of your wee rooms. I've been there, I've been academic myself. Come in, meet with the civil society, play around, play with policy, say what's right and what's wrong and where we should go in. We need to have more of those public intellectuals. I'm optimistic. I genuinely believe that the vast majority of people in this city and elsewhere want to make things better. We all want less poverty, less inequality, more regards to the environment. We are, as human beings, empathic. We have empathy with others. But good, and this is the moment we're in, good intentions and feelings need now, in this moment, translated into action. I think we as individuals and perhaps as organisations have been cowed for too many years. We've become inured to the sense of, oh, we can't really change it, it's like an inevitable. No. Inequality and poverty is a scourge. It's a scourge which is not someone else's or some other institution's or organisation's responsibility. It's ours now. Thank you.